With regards to weapons and armor, we had many of the same challenges as the rest of the art production. It was very important that we hit on a lot of the same philosophies that we did with uh, creatures or environments, uh, architecture, which is uh, some of the oversizing of, of items and colors and exaggeration and things like that. Specific challenges I think we had with doing the items and the weapons in the game was like the progression of coolness factor from an item you get at level 1 to an item you get at level 60. We wanted to make sure to reward the player when they're playing, and so even at level one, we want them to feel epic and cool. And at level 60, you know, we still want, you know, the same wow factor. It was always a challenge to make sure that the low-level items in the game were still rewarding and cool looking. So uh, we uh, tried to come up with a visual progression of what the... Uh, what people can expect to receive in the game. Early on, they were probably a little too dry, a little too toned down, and we realized not too far into production that we needed to kind of not only start beefing them up and exaggerating them, but also playing around with some little effects and things we could do to make the weapons really feel sharp, but without utilizing a whole lot of technology. I think towards the end of production, we pretty much abandoned making a low-level average looking equipment in the game and started to front load your play experience with just exciting weapons as much as we could and challenge ourselves to come up with even more interesting, exciting, shimmery, glowy, enticing uh, loot or weapons and items you know, for the higher levels in the game. In fact, um, with our spell team, those guys actually came in more towards the latter end with weapons and really helped us find even that sort of next increment where really uber items could not only be beautiful and really ornate with texture and uh, environment maps, but we could even push them further with actually adding some spell attributes along with them so that you'd maybe get this flame sort of righteousness and, and you would kind of get these cool fiery effects coming off of it. And that was really yet another progression that um, really helped us at the end just kind of pull those way over the top. After that, everyone just got excited again about seeing glows and fireballs and dripping poisons and ice spells and things just kind of emanating out of the weapon. It's just that next level of progression to help incentivize people to, to keep playing the game and look yeah. for stuff in the game. In addition to the, the items and the weapons that you're questing for in the game, there's all kinds of armor, helmets and shoulder pads and chest plates and boots, all kinds of stuff. So it, you know, some of the same rules that we had for designing the weapons uh, all apply to the armor, you know, and there's a wealth of Warcraft history and mythos and, and already established look and feel. So we we basically just eventually just decided just to pull from what we already had. Um, we did a lot of initial designing up front as well, but uh, there was no shortage of pre-existing art and design concept work to pull from. Yeah, I know. I remember when uh, we decided just to go ahead and pretty straightforward, just copy um, the old orc battle harness kind of outfit straight out of uh, War Two, and that really struck a chord with uh, the entire team because now suddenly we had these higher poly detail characters where you're looking at them in first person, but no one had really gotten the sense that this thing was Warcraft yet. And so seeing uh, one of these orcs kind of pacing around with a horned fur-rimmed helmet and this battle harness and, you know, fur leggings, I mean, it really kind of got everybody geeked up because now they felt like they were really down in this world, in this Warcraft universe, and just kind of getting to experience it. And really, now I'm really actually seeing an orc up close from Warcraft, not just any orc from any game. That gave us sort of a, a hook where then we felt once we had nailed those down, we could kind of continue on and actually evolve those further and actually start to create our own style from those. It was definitely a positive mark in outfit creation. All of our modelers and texture artists all do concepts, and so we you know, just let them all at it and uh, just see what people could come up with. Something as simple as just you know the boots in the game of you know just different uh, chess pieces and uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff floating around to pull from. Yeah, and that was where we needed to decide exactly how we were going to organize these because, you know, we knew we had the Horde Alliance thing, but we didn't know specifically just how far we should break it down. You know, we, we have uh, quite a few races uh, on each side, and sometimes those share a lot of themes with each other, and sometimes they don't because, uh, you know, you have the difference in a night elf and a human, and there was a great dichotomy, whereas the night elves almost fit more visually with, say, a Horde. We needed to actually... Um, give them some of their own flavor, but in the long run, what the biggest distinction was, was Horde and Alliance, and that um, as long as we covered the bases for each race, really they just needed to kind of fall into those two categories. In addition, everything's broken down into cloth, leather, mail, and plate, and then there's robes and stuff. 
you know, as we got further down uh, development, we started accumulating all these outfits and trying to keep them organized in a way that uh, all the different artists could reference them and see where we were deficient. Oh, we need more plate mail armor. Oh, we have too much cloth armor. And so we just started to organize them in a spreadsheet and with the naming conventions and, uh, you know, with the level of progression, you can look down the spreadsheet and see, oh, okay, here's like the low level intermediate stuff, higher level stuff. Uh, you know, up to the really exciting stuff. We didn't realize how much that was going to um, help us because we really had started doing it for uh, the designers mostly. So as they would take the art that we would create, we knew that they needed a way that they could see an entire outfit that we had uh, intended as a whole, whether or not you would find it as such in the game. Right. But what it ended up doing was actually feeding back to us as well because now we had this very big visual right in front of our face and we started realizing oh, hey, you know, maybe uh, some of these leathers are all kind of looking the same or that, you know, from a distance we're not really uh, not really getting a lot of contrast between them. So it really helped push us to go further with the outfits and really we could see that progression and we can say, oh, okay, now maybe we mix these two up or uh, we need three more at the end of, you know, this string so that we really got a full kit that, you know, a player would get in a particular area or as a particular alliance or horde member. In addition, we also organized all the uh, all the weapons on spreadsheets as well, and it showed us the progression of you know the first level uh, weapons all the way to the higher level equipment. And we had you know one handed versions, two handed versions, and there's all kinds of weapons in the game. You know, swords and shields and hammers and maces and knives and thrown weapons and uh, there was just so many different things to keep organized that uh, you know we're just trying to trying to stay on top of it all. I think organization was like one of the big big things we learned on this project is that uh, you couldn't. I don't think you could be too organized with trying